Hello, welcome back to my channel. So let's talk about Jessica in this last episode. So last week, Jessica went to go meet Dustin's family. She met up with his sister and his mom with her daughter. And she found out that Dustin loves his crystal meth and he loves smoking weed. And not only that, his family also informed Jessica that Dustin's a little hoe bag. He isn't one to stay faithful to any girl he dates. So after hearing that from his family, Jessica was starting to realize she may be a little bit more in over her head than she realized. So we got Jessica, a 40-year-old woman lusting over a 28-year-old meth head that she decided to get his name tattooed across her torso. And so she was finally able to get approved for visits. So she went to go visit Dustin for the first time in person. Like, yes, they've seen each other in person when she worked at the prison, but they weren't able to really talk or kiss. And they'll be able to kiss for the first time at this visit. And Jessica was talking about, you know, I'm scared that when Dustin gets out of prison, he may not be the man that I need him to be or I want him to be. But she said she feels like that's a risk that you take with any man. And while, yes, that may be true, but your chances are like a hundred times higher that this person isn't going to be the man that you need them to be just because of his history. Like when you have someone like Dustin who keeps repeating the same mistakes and can't seem to stay out of prison, I think Jessica is naive to the fact of how much higher the risks are when it comes to dating someone in prison because this is her first rodeo when it comes to dating a criminal and she's going to learn real quick that dating an inmate comes with more stress and drama that she probably isn't used to experiencing and probably not expecting. Like a partner, you have to stress out that they may relapse. You have to stress out if they're going to reoffend or go hang out with bad influences. And then they're a felon, so that already makes life more difficult and you have more challenges compared to someone else who isn't a felon or an inmate. So Jessica has a whole list of new problems she's never dealt with in life, but they're going to be added to her plate because she's choosing to date an inmate. At the moment, sister telling you he doesn't like staying sober and he's a little hoe, and those are the people that know him better than anyone else, then I think that says a lot. And Jessica needs to open up her ears and stop like looking the other way when she's getting all these signs and red flags but instead she's choosing to ignore them and putting the pedal to the metal and going full steam ahead so then jessica went to go visit dustin and of course the cameras weren't allowed in the prison to film the visit so after three hours jessica comes out from the prison and she's super upset saying that they suddenly terminated her visiting rights out of nowhere and they didn't even explain the reasoning. So she said she didn't even get a chance to say bye to Dustin. But she's able to visit with him for a while. But she thinks that the DOC had it out for her since she used to work at the prison. And since she had to put all the prisons she worked out on the application before she was allowed to visit. So then Jessica got super stressed out because her being terminated from visitation means she can no longer send Dustin money because you have to be a visitor to send money. And Jessica's Dustin's bread and butter, so if she can't send him money, then how are they going to communicate? Because he can't put time on the phone or buy stamps to send her letters without money. So she said they cuffed him and took him to the hole after their visit, and he literally just got out of the hole not that long ago. But I swear that dude spends more time in the hole than he does outside the hole in prison. So Jessica brought up what Dustin's family told her about him loving his crystal meth and weed to him while she's visiting him, and he admitted that was true, and he said that he had recently relapsed while he was in prison. If he's going to use meth in prison, then that means he's not done using yet. Like, if you're going to use meth when it's super expensive and more hard to get in prison, then you're going to use meth in a heartbeat when you're in the free world and it's easier to get and cheaper. He tried using the excuse to Jessica that he was bored. He has nothing to do in there. So that's why he decided to get high. But I'm pretty sure that wasn't the only time that he's been high in prison because that dude stays in the hole. And I've never been to prison in my life. I've been to plenty of county jails in the past when I was on drugs in my younger years. 
And I remember when I was in jail, one time I did a line of meth while I was in jail. I traded like a Reese's, a honey bun, a Butterfinger, and a couple packs of ramen for it. And that was the worst idea I had ever made. Because when I was always in jail, I was just super depressed. And I just wanted to sleep my time away. And then I remember our pod got put on 48 hour lockdown. So I literally stayed up for like two days straight and couldn't leave my bunk. And it was like the most miserable, most boring two days of my life. And I just wanted to sleep. Like, I was up all night long watching everybody else sleep peacefully while I couldn't sleep to save my life. And there's nothing worse than when you just want to do nothing but sleep, but you can't fall asleep. And there's literally nothing else to do but sit there and, like, read some books or just sit there and stare at a damn wall. So then Jessica had her friend Shonda come over. Shonda, I think that's the name. And I like Shonda, her friend, because she's the most sensible person I've seen on this whole season. She, and I swear, this girl's like a fortune teller because she's straight like predicting the future of what the events are probably going to happen in Jessica's life as she continues to move forward with this relationship. So Jessica straight admitted, she said, you know... I don't know why I have a thing for Dustin. If I knew, it'd probably make more sense to me. But I think that I think I can save him and I want him to do better. And, you know, I want to be that person to help him. And, you know, her friend and her looking at letters. And the thing is, Jessica said she had no idea that uh, Dustin was a little meth head until his family told her. But when she's reading these letters with her friend... There's a line where Dustin admitted to using meth. So this wasn't the first time that Jessica found out about him using when she met up with his family. She already knew about it went from this letter. So Jessica's friend said, well, what drugs is he taking in prison? And Jessica started choking up and crying. And she said he was using meth. And she's like, Oh my goodness, you need to get away and get away quick, Jessica, because this is just going to be issues. If he's using in prison, he's going to use on the outside. If he's not done, he's not done. And that's real, because if someone is still teeter-tottering on the fact that they want to get sober, or they just want to use here and there, then they're not done with the drugs, period. Like, when I finally got sober, that was when I was fully 100% done, and I knew there was no way in hell that I was going to go back to it. But he's not done. And Jessica just does not want to accept it. But her friend was keeping it real with her. And said girl you need to get away. See the thing is you're a nurse. So what we do is we save people for a living. And we try to do that in our own life. And we try to save people in our lives. That's why we go for such terrible men. And we try to save them when they don't deserve it. And then they just end up dragging us down in the end. And so Jessica's friend said, girl, you need to run and you need to run quick. But regardless of what you decide to do, I'm not judging you and I'm still going to be here for you. But girl, you need to run. <laughs> Then Jessica was trying to downplay the fact that he used. She said, well, he used, but he did admit it to me. And he didn't have to admit it to me. And he did use, but it's not like he got caught with anything in prison or anything like that. And it's like, girl, you don't even know that. He's in and out of the hole. He spends more time in the hole than he does outside the hole. I wouldn't be surprised if he's been caught with some stuff more than once. Shoot, that may be why they suddenly canceled your visit. Because people who get stuff brought into them from visitors, that's usually how they get their drugs or from the guards. And then they usually get their visitation rights taken away when they get caught with stuff because they don't want them to go get more stuff and bring it in the prison. Like, that's what my mind automatically went to when I found out that they terminated her visit all of a sudden for no reason at all. And she's trying to say, oh, the DOC don't like me because I used to work at the prison. But I feel like if that was the case, then why would they let her come and visit for half the time to begin with? It didn't make much sense to me. I automatically thought, well, shoot, maybe when they had him at, out of his cell doing the visit, maybe they decided to do a little bunk inspection and maybe they found something inside his cell and maybe that's why they took him back to the hole again because he had to do something 
for him to get put back in the hole again. If he wasn't at the hole when he got to the visit and he's at the hole again at the end of the visit, then that had to be something on him unless he did something during the visit that he wasn't supposed to do. But that's just my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you so much for watching.